Welcome back, I'm Sonali Krishna and you're watching the Brand Equity Can 2011 special. Now, Foursquare's founder is tech's latest celebrity. For the uninitiated, Foursquare is a location-based social networking website for mobile devices. Foursquare users get access to loads of discounts and freebies and the response it's got from brands has just been phenomenal. I caught up with the founder himself, Dennis Crowley, to chat about how Foursquare is doing in the crowded social media space and why he believes Foursquare has an edge over Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us, Dennis. Truly a pleasure to have you on Brand Equity. Thank you for having me. Uh, for the benefit of our audience, mm -hmm. could you explain how Foursquare works and sure. how it's different from, let's say, a Twitter and a Facebook? Sure. So, you know, what we're trying to do with Foursquare is make things for mobile phones that um, make the world a little bit easier and more interesting for people to explore. And the primary action that people do with Foursquare is they check in the places. So we're at this, this hotel now, and you know, as soon as we sat down, I checked in to let people know that, hey, I'm here, and that I've been here before. Um, and people do this all over the place. They do it at beaches and parks and restaurants and libraries. Um, and, you know, as we're doing that, people are learning about the places that their friends go to. And, you know, Foursquare is doing stuff where we're collecting all this information and we can use it in a way to recommend new places and new experiences to people, which I think is very interesting. Um, it's, it's a, it, what we're doing is very different than what Facebook and Twitter are doing. And Facebook is becoming very good at helping people share things online, like links and photos and status updates. And, you know, that's where people go to communicate with their friends online. Uh, Twitter is becoming a source for, you know, this is where you're, you end up following brands and um, you know, getting short snippets of news and information. And, you know, that's what a lot of people um, equate Twitter with. And Foursquare is becoming this tool that can really help you navigate the real world, the physical world, in different ways. And I think that's, you know, it's one of the, our strongest things is that we're, we're just focused on that part of it and just focused on location. You know, uh, Foursquare started off as a service that would help users connect and find out where their friends are and where they're going. Were you surprised by how brands and small businesses uh, took to the service? Sure. So when Naveen and I started Foursquare, I mean, we're very much focused on building things that we wanted to use and things that our friends wanted to use. And we never really anticipated that merchants would, would want to get involved. And it was really a, a big surprise wh when they started doing that. In fact, they, they were the ones that were showing us what they wanted to use the platform for. Brands were the same way. It happened a couple months after the merchants got involved. And, you know, we were contacted by Bravo. I think it was one of the first brands on Foursquare, Bra a TV station in the U.S. And, you know, we were like, hey, we want to use this to promote some of our shows. What can we do? So it, it's very surprising for us. And it's, it's worked out very, very well. Uh, what were the early conversations with brands like? I mean, did they understand the power of location service? Um, you know, some of the more progressive brands understand that like, there's something interesting going on with lo location-based services and how they overlap with social software and, and mobile devices. Um, but, you know, it, it took a lot of experimentation to, to figure it out. So, you know, Foursquare's got a lot of different moving parts. It's got, you know, our little tip system. We have game mechanics. We have badges. And it took a lot of going back and forth with some of the, the early adopters, or the brands that were early adopters on Foursquare, for us to get the formula just right. And now it seems like we're, we're digging up stuff that's pretty interesting. Domino's and Starbucks are some of the early brands that came onto your platform. Uh, what sort of success did they see? And uh, what was the one campaign which served as a tipping point and really caught your attention, really yeah. caught their attention? So it's interesting, it's like the brands that you're mentioning, Domino's and, and Starbucks, we always think of them as merchants because like, those, are, those are businesses where people, you know, people are going into the store and you know, having a relationship with them and walking out with the coffee or walking out with the pizza. Um, so wh what we're seeing is we've seen um, you know, fantastic success from a lot of these folks that have retail, retail chains or retail um, venues because Foursquare is great at driving customers into them. Um, with, um, with Domino's, for example, like they were, they were running a um, particular promotion where it's like, you know, if you, if you check in, you're, in, you're you know, able to get a discount on one of these pizzas. With Starbucks, like if you were the mayor, um, you were able to get a discount on a, on a Frappuccino. And when they start running these promotions, you see the number of check-ins spike because like you're, you're encouraging people to do this action, you know, with, the, with the, the prize at the end being a discount on one of these items. And we're seeing it work not just for big chains, but we're seeing it work for like small cafes, small pizza shops, like the guys that are selling coffee or tacos out of a, out of a truck. Like right. it works for everyone. Uh, you know, both Twitter and Facebook haven't seen any success with big brands coming onto their service as quickly as Foursquare. Is it because um, location lends itself better to brands? I think with location, it's actually it's, it's a little bit trickier. Um, and you're starting to see the same type of experimentation with brands on Foursquare as you saw with brands on Twitter a couple years ago. And I can remember seeing, like, what is JetBlue going to do with Twitter? Like, what is, you know, what is, you know, Pampers or Coke? What are they going to do with Twitter? And then they, they find their voice and they find their, 
you know, their way of using that service. And I think we're finding the same thing with Foursquare. They're thinking, what are we going to do around location? Like, what does Pampers do with location-based services? And it turns out, like, you know, actually they could do something really interesting for, like, helping new parents, you know, potential customers for diapers, um, rediscover a familiar neighborhood. Like, oh, well, I live in Brooklyn. I just had a kid. I want to rediscover Brooklyn through the lens of a new parent. It's through a new parent. And that's something that, you know, Pampers might be able to do on Foursquare better they, than they can do in any other service. We just hit our 10, um, we just had our, our 10 million user sign up milestone just early this week. So like we're starting to hit this, um, you know, this, this, this bit of critical mass where people understand it. And it's, it's really our job to go out there and teach people how to use these services and really what makes them really special and great. But most of your users are from the United States? Um, about 50% of our usage comes from the U.S. and 50% of it is international. And we're starting to see, you know, pockets of activity all over the place. Like there's little pockets of activity all over Europe. Um, we saw Southeast Asia, like Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand light up for us. Um, earlier uh, last year, we saw a big growth in Japan, and right now we're seeing huge growth in Brazil. What does your revenue model look like? Yeah, so right now um, we, we're generating some revenue from uh, some of the partnerships that we've done with bigger brands. Right. Um, what it's eventually going to be is, you know, we've built this, this really robust platform for local merchants. Right. This is like tools that are meant for coffee shops and pizza places and restaurants and cafes. And right now, we're allowing a lot of these local merchants to run specials, and the specials reward new customers and reward uh, existing loyal customers. Um, we haven't been charging for those services yet, but as those services start to get a little bit stronger and a little bit more targeted, that could be something that we can very easily charge for. Give us a peek into the future of brands at Foursquare and what are the possibilities? Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that we're, um, that we're building now, it's specifically designed around trying to make it easier for brands to get on Foursquare. Right now, it can be a little bit of a, of a complicated process, and we're working to fix that. Um, but, you know, the message that we're trying to get across for brands is that you can use Foursquare to create an augmented, like almost like a layer on top of the real world, that as people walk around and, and you know, travel at different spots or go to different coffee shops or just live their everyday lives, they can start unlocking different pieces of content that were designed or written by those particular brands. Um, the History Channel is a great example of someone that was using Foursquare in this way, where anywhere that you go in New York, if you're following the History Channel on Foursquare and you start checking in the places, they'll send you back little nuggets of history, like, oh, you happen to be at Yankee Stadium? Did you know that this happened 100 years ago? Oh, wow. Yeah, when you check in at our office in downtown Manhattan, you get a, um, you get a, a tip from the History Channel that says, hey, across the street, the first elevator ever in the world was installed. And it's just like, it's a little nugget of content that, you know, is really tied to the History Channel's brand and I think is really enjoyable to use it. Thank <laughs> you so much, Dennis. Truly a pleasure to have you on Randy. Thank you for having me on the show. And with that, we bring the curtains down on our Cannes 2011 special. We hope you had as much fun watching it as we had working through it. So do take the time and write to us at brandequity at etnow.tv. You could also log on to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash brandequity to give us your thoughts, views and comments. It's been a rather overwhelming seven days in the south of France. Until next week, Aru The internet has exploited a help. With BB and BD, things are pretty charged up. We'd like to welcome on stage the Dalai Lama and Nicole Scherzinger. <laughs>We have a new North Star, and that is the development of uh, Liquid Ideas, it's Vision 2020. Our goal is simple, really, to create personal digital experiences on every platform. If you are going to have a community manager uh, engaging uh, online with Dove uh, in China, it better be the local Chinese team. We want to be the most local of the big players. When Mark Zuckerberg put the thought together and said, what happens when we actually allow real people to become real people online? Oh, 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 oh.